What's up guys, welcome back to welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be working on the 335i S. Absolutely insane to say that we actually have this car here on the, pretty much almost on the driveway. In today's video our goals are to get the car pretty much riding and driving, like pretty much starting this thing up, drive it down the road, drive it back. Obviously the line is not going to be perfect but the goal is to replace all the control arms and everything and replace um, the new, we need to replace the battery, a couple other things, uh, maybe even the oil cooler, just pretty much get this thing in mechanically good working order and cosmetically we'll work on that little by little but the main things to see if we can get this thing driving, if we can get this thing to start up, that is the goal. You guys saw in the last video that I gave you guys a little teaser, so let's go ahead and throw you guys into what's happening right now, which is the startup. First things first, so let's actually see what we actually have in this trunk, if there's anything like some extra tools, anything that we can actually reuse, and the rest of the things, let's just go ahead and throw it in a garbage bag because just too much things in this trunk. Here's the stuff I actually ended up finding in the trunk. First off, I actually found two calculators, and I'm pretty sure this was actually worth a good amount of money. The TI84 Plus. I mean, it's got a bunch of connectors and stuff, so it just looks kind of expensive. But I have no idea. There's two cute calculators right here. Found a bunch of extra sockets and stuff. I mean, tools never, you know, never get old. Actually, this set right here is gonna be really nice. So uh, yeah, found a couple extra tools in the trunk, which is super cool. And then I actually found this little Kate Spade bag, which is kind of crazy. And if you open up this Kate Spade bag, like look what's actually in here, which is like, <laughs> Like what? These are actually $88 each. So that is crazy. $88. I don't even know. And these are supposed to be for your arms. I mean, this is too small, honestly, but $88 each. So, you know, we're already recouping some of our money, guys. And then we got a backpack over here. Let's see. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and see what's inside. Yeah, bunch of school stuff. More school stuff. I'm actually gonna be hitting up the previous owner and trying to get most of this stuff back to him. I mean, I kind of want to keep now, kid. I'm gonna hit him back up and see if he wants all of his stuff back. So I'm gonna put everything back in the bag, including the tools. And uh, if he wants to come down here, he is from San Francisco, it's about an hour and a half drive. Or I can even just end up mailing this to him. But yeah, there's a bunch of his old stuff, and I'm sure he kind of wants it. But it's kind of cool to see all this. I'm actually not gonna show you guys everything inside the bag because that is personal stuff. But anyway, this is like I'm my boy Erlon. I'll catch y'all in a second. He just showed up. So like I said, guys, my boy Erlon just made it. He's gonna be helping me out with the 335 IS. Uh, we're gonna actually going to be checking the stuff frame because he's, he's actually re replaced a lot of oil pans and stuff like that so you know how a stuff frame is supposed to look right so <laughs> just help me look at it and if it looks too bent out of whack we're going to have to replace it uh, but other than that we do have pretty much all the stuff we need on the passenger side we have the uh, control arm i think it's like the upper one the lower one um and this is or actually the front and back i don't really i don't know um, so we got the tie rod and then this is considered like a sway bar thing or what is this? Sway bar and link. Sway bar and link. So we got all that stuff. I, we do have an extra control arm just for the heck of it. Um, I don't know if we're going to be doing both sides. We'll probably just focus on the driver's side. If there's any issues with the passenger side, we do have one. These all came off of the original bumpers. So that's really good because all this stuff costs a lot of money. And we actually extracted all of our front sensors as well. So that is really good. And then we got a brand new oil cooler. So yeah, the goal is to pretty much replace all those arms, get the car driving from here down the street, which would be super ideal. Replace the oil cooler and then replace the battery and then the positive cable so again we can just start this thing up tomorrow morning every morning we can actually move it and just start working on it so that is the goal so without further ado let's go and work on that battery thing first and another pause to the video it looks like i'm actually missing that cable i ordered the new positive cable and it looks like we're missing it so uh anywho so let's go ahead and just work on the front of the car right now Everything is broken so badly that the wheel is literally rubbing against the car. Oh, buddy. All these control arms are literally destroyed. Even this wheel, guys. I got a new wheel because this wheel, I mean, Erlon says it's savable, but I don't know how I feel about that, man. <laughs> You're saying that you can get, just get this resurfaced? In Texas, but as you guys know, they would probably weld this back, fill it in, straighten it, and then usually to go to a professional tire shop, they have that machine that kind of machines the edge again, so then they leave the perfect finish, and then it's done. I feel it. It's just my only issues, but do you see that giant piece just missing there? I know, but they would straighten it out and then they would weld it. So they'd fill it in. Oh. And then so they, they'd repair it. Like, you'd be some, like. I know, but what you're saying, bro, sounds like a lot of money, bro. I went ahead and ordered a new one. <laughs> no, it's just, honestly, I just feel like it's going to be a lot easier. So we have a new rim at the house. This tire honestly looks usable. We'll go ahead and take it off and see if the wheel has any big gouges. I mean, the tire, if it has any big gouges. But as for now, yeah, let's just go ahead and take off this wheel. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly guys, this tire actually looks like it has good tread. I, I just see a little bit of damage out here, but I think it's good. What do you think, Erlon, your professional opinion? I mean, it has, like, it has obviously, a gouge there, yeah, but it has it's a not bunch too of, deep. It's holding air. We could pry it apart uh, oh, a little this? bit. 
these strings? No, it looks like just like a, a manufacturer mark. See how there's two lines in there too? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything too bad. Oh, nope. Never mind, we're good. All right, well, hopefully we can save some money on this tire. <laughs> Is it a run flat? Um, How can you tell? Is there like an RF somewhere or something? Yeah, they say RFT. They're Pirelli's? P Pirelli's P0. Oh, they are run flats. So the upside to this being a run flat is... Even if it goes bad, we'll know. Well, actually, it might already be bad. But it's been sitting like this for two years. I know, but run flats don't... They don't exactly sag very much because of run flats. You can blow this tire completely and still drive to the dealership. That's why it's a run flat. Run flat. You can blow it chunk in it and still so drive it to the dealership. Should we give it a shot or just toss it? Well, I mean, we'll, we'll check right now with the tire pressure. If enough pressure is in there, we'll we'll run it. Okay, cool. For, to get around till you find a nice set, uh, but we'll check. All right, well then, meantime, guys, uh, let's go ahead and show you guys those control arms because, oh, boy, look at that tie rod, dude. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Yeah, so this one's clearly just like a full U. Oh, bro, this is completely knocked off. Yeah, snapped off. That one's snapped. I'm hoping, we're gonna have to check the shock as well. Again, we're checking the subframe. Uh, but uh, yeah, I guess at this point, let's just start removing all the arms. The strut's definitely bent. Can you see it? Oh, the strut's, oh, the strut is bent, bro. Rip. You can see the little buckling right there. Yeah. Dang. Okay, well, we'll need a new strut, guys. That's unfortunate, but. Well, I thought this was gonna be a, <laughs> a one-day thing, but it looks like we might actually have to order some more parts, unfortunately. I mean, we're forgetting the cable. For some reason, I lost the cable for the battery, and now we actually need a new strut, so we're gonna have to figure that out, but while we're here, we can might as well look at the subframe and just double check if that's any good. Oh, buddy. All right, that's the broken control arm. And it came out with the... Oh, man. Easy. Last time I broke five T40 bits trying to get this stupid thing out. <laughs> Thank God it just came out then. All right, well, that's our entire hub right here, guys. Again, so we're just gonna go ahead and actually remove all the bad control arms. We're gonna swap out the new control arms. I did hit up somebody locally that has a strut, so we'll see if it gets back to us in time. But meantime, let's go ahead and replace all those control arms. Thankfully, they're coming apart not too badly. Bro, that thing is just messed up. So we pulled out the other arm. I have to show you guys the other arm too, but oh my God, guys. Every single one of these arms have seen way better days. That is just crazy. But as far, bro, is that messed up right there? It's a little dent, but it's not gonna affect the alignment because it doesn't have anything to do with the bolt holes for the... Uh, yeah, like it's all straight. Yeah, like oh, we looked at these where the bolt, where the subframe actually bolts up. Nothing looks bent or creaked or anything when anything's been exposed. So, and okay. Good. So you should be good. It's just a little ding. It shouldn't affect anything. It won't affect anything. Okay, cool, cool. So yeah, that I mean, obviously guys, that is the good news. Obviously a strut is new news, but I mean, hey, I'm gonna buy a new strut than rather have to replace this entire subframe. So uh, yeah, I guess the next thing would have to be the stupid tie rod because that thing's gonna be a little bit of a mission. And just like that, guys, we're gonna go ahead and pause on the project. We're gonna go ahead and take our Lance car. Uh, man, oh man, this thing's loud. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and get something to eat and probably go get that new strut. Hoping that a new strut is the one we need because uh, there's a sport one and a non-sport one. So hopefully this is the right one we need. Just actually got here to Habit Burger, but before we did that, I actually stopped by this local guy in Sacramento. I always buy a bunch of parts from him. We got a brand new shock right there. So uh, it's actually not new, but it's used, but from a 335, so it should be the identical, should be the sport suspension. So yeah. Before we actually get back and install that, it's gonna enjoy a good burger from Habit. Bro, what's up with all the bright cars over here? We got a freaking super bright yellow car, super bright orange car. Oh, bro, that's what I'm talking about. Congratulations, bro. That is awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Any usual. Awesome. 
God bless habit, guys. That was a great meal. We're heading home right now. Hopefully, everything ends up working out according to plan. Fingers crossed. The goals are is to get the car down the road and back. Hopefully, it's going to be running really good. I'm really hoping. I'm really hoping. I think the only thing it really needs, honestly, is that strut. Put everything back together, and it should be straight. As long as that's straight, and as long as you put in the battery and uh, pretty much jump it, should be good to go. <laughs> Bro, that looks good. Sheesh. Bro, your car actually looks so good. Should we, should we, should we go for it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> now that we are back, guys, let's get back to work. My foot was getting wet and I'm like, wow, my foot's getting cold. Yes, and see what my boy Erlon's doing, but he's pretty much already trying to adjust, trying to make the alignment better than it is right now. And uh, basically, the rotor was kind of like out like this, which would have been absolutely terrible. But he's already bringing it in. We just need to get in a little bit more, and we're good to go. Guys, we just got the wheel on there, and as you guys can see, almost equal gaps all the way around. Once we actually get on the ground, it's gonna be equal gaps, but oh my God, this is looking so much better. Oof, off to McDonald's we go, guys. <laughs> oh, buddy. That oil cool looks a little concerning, <laughs> but I think it'll do for a little test drive. Now that we got this stuff situated, guys, hopefully now at this point, as soon as you actually put in the new battery and rig the battery positive cable, this thing should be able to drive forward. So the goal is uh, replace the battery and then rig that cable. Let's get to it. Guys, we have power to the car, 56,000 miles. Radio's working, that's kind of crazy. But yes, Erlon, shout out to Erlon. He always knows his ways to actually get into the car, but actually have to remove all the rear seats. Everything's working in the car, it sounds crazy. But anywho, those first startup, hopefully everything's gravy in the Navy. Moment of truth, guys, did we actually score on this or did we rip really hard? And without further ado. Oh. So yeah, smooth. The airbag light. Um, do a brake light. Oh, no, actually, dude, nothing. Just the airbag light, and that's just because of the, you know, obviously the turmoil. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of airbag shit going on right here, but I mean, woo, buddy. That's crazy. This thing's idle so smooth. Like, it sounds so good. It sounds like it's literally been running the last two years. It doesn't sound yeah. like it's been sitting for two years. Oh, bro, this steering looks so good. I miss M Sport. <laughs> oh, you're back in park. Huh? You're back in park. Whoa. Okay. So it just. Oh, it went in gear. Yeah. Okay. It well, should be a neutral. If it's if it was still a neutral, it'd be a neutral. Does that right. make sense? All right. I think another thing to do in this video as well, guys, want to come on over here. We're just gonna go ahead and just quickly throw everything back together so it can look a lot better. Then our lines and jump in the passenger seat, and we're gonna head out. It's like the it's like any any guy's dream spec, right? Yeah. Full M Sport I Drive. Honeycomb, honeycomb trim, bro. red sport interior. Do you have heated seats? Yeah, heated seats. Heated, uh, you, navigation. There's, there's literally nothing better. <laughs> this thing has everything. That's why I absolutely love it. Black headliner, and you get the 335i accents, which is like the gray faces. 
on the gauge. Oh, this thing's coming. Oh yeah, that too though. Whoa. <laughs> Hold up, relax. We also have both. Look how sick that looks. Oh, that was satisfying. <laughs> oh, it looks so good. So dude. good. Oh my god, hop inside bro. We're gonna go on our first little drive with the car. Hopefully everything's great in the Navy. Um, there is a slight little ticking sound, bro. Can you hear that? Yeah. Slight little ticking sound, and actually not ticking, knocking sound. I'm hoping it's not the engine. It could be the, uh, the power steering pump, right? So, hoping it's that, hoping it's not. The, I mean, when I give it revs, it's not consistent with the rev. Yeah, and then when I let off, do you hear it? Yeah. So, because like, what it could be is like, usually it's the power steering pumps. Yeah. Where they're loose and they're rattling, low idle, and you give idle, and the serpentine belt pulls on it, right? So yeah. it kind of tightens up and loosens up. But we'll go ahead and get some new belts from FCP here. But like Erlon said earlier uh, off camera, he said if you actually remove the belt and run the engine, uh, if obviously if you don't hear anything, that's a good thing. If you do hear it still, obviously it's not going to be your power steering pump. Um, but yeah, uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and do that hopefully in the next video. As of right now, I, I, if the engine's blown, the engine's blown. We're gonna drive it anyways. Uh, yeah, I mean, so far everything's working, guys. This thing does feel a little weird at, when we just reassembled everything, so maybe I need to dive back into this. But it does feel a little, a little weird, I'm not gonna lie. Open, okay. Bro, I just feel like the wheel's gonna fall off. <laughs> oh no, dude. Uh, got my power with my power mirrors are working guys. Oh, hold on, I'm still just on the same side. Let's try this side. Let's see. Yep, we are good. Okay, cool. I mean, other than the fact that I got a blown uh, you know, airbag, the whole front end still wrecked and this airbag's blown. I mean, it's driving, right? Yeah, this feel a little funny. Uh, do you think one of the tires is flat? No, it's definitely feeling like there's something wrong with the <laughs> suspension for sure. Could be the tires, could be a bent rim, who knows. Yeah, that's true. Uh, obviously, this side took a really heavy hit. The rear wheels are not even matching. We do have the original rear wheels, and I did actually order this new wheel, so hopefully we can have the original wheels all in the car pretty soon, but as of right now, bro, it's driving, yeah. you know? That's important. That's one of the main things. Bro, imagine if we just see a cop, bro. My heart is just, oh, let's get home, bro. <laughs> Oh, yeah, a little bit. Okay, go. Make your right turn. Right, go. Straighten it out. Yeah, will be good. <laughs> All right, well, clearly we can't take hard right turns. It's just, bro, you're gonna slam that thing on your oh, foot. I know, I almost lost my foot. <laughs> okay, all right, but again, no check engine light. We're driving pretty good so far, bro. Just, in, just you know, airbag lights, the typical hood light, and all that good stuff, but I'm just, too shabby. Just pick up speed here, like, drive it like you're not worried. I want to, we'll see how it feels. Because when you drive it slow, you start to feel everything. Yeah, so it just feels like one of the wheels is bent, like the front front. Yeah, it does feel or, like the wheel is bent. Or, remember, sure. it's possible all four of your tires could be like flat, flat. spotted from sitting. The wheels are not even the same, so. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and go left slowly. <laughs> oh, no, dude. Wait, Lana, I'm gonna need your help again, bro. <laughs> when did you get this thing home? Uh, okay, go. All right. Baby pool, I guess. Oh, that's the horn. <laughs> it works. Sheesh. Good. And guys, we are officially at the end of the video. So I know the 335 IS is pretty much running and driving at this point, but is that sound something I should be concerned about? Honestly, we're gonna be hopefully in the next video taking off the belt. That's what I'm actually doing as of today, right now that I'm filming this part of the video. Hopefully, I'm gonna be heading over trying to remove the belt to make sure that the engine is perfectly good. Thankfully, the 335 ISs, I believe, have the exact same motor as a typical N54. It's just the transmission, everything else is different. So worst comes to worst, we're just gonna have to buy another N54. But that is absolutely worst comes to worst. I'm so happy there's very 
very minimal lights on the dashboard and uh, oh my god guys I'm super excited to get this whole car together this is like an absolute dream spec for me the red interior the honeycomb trim the navigation and everything's in such good care not to mention it's only 56,000 miles so I'm just so 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 blessed I'm really 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 happy about this build I hope you guys are too something I also did want to mention guys for those of you guys who are always asking me are you ever gonna host a car meet yes finally be hosting a car meet with Showman Motors at his shop I haven't really found a space to actually do it legally so me and Showman Motors and Hard Park and a couple of the communities around me are gonna be hosting this event at Showman Motors so for those of you guys who want to come through there's also gonna be little foods and stuff like that over there as well it's gonna be really 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 fun really nice to get to see some of you guys and your guys' cars we're gonna be trying to bring out the F80 and possibly another build if we can get it done by October 30th October 30th guys that is the date of our first ever car I mean I am super hyped for I'm gonna pop it up right here it should show like the address all the information this is something that Hard Park posted so yeah save that date guys I'm gonna be trying to mention it every single video until that car meet happens so make sure you guys free up some time it is in Davis California and I would love to see you guys there without further ado guys hopefully in the next video I'm gonna be trying to wrap up more things on this car and then hopefully take it out to the frame shop to get that a pillar pulled back up fixed up so we can put the whole front end on there I am super excited I already got an order on the hood we just need to get a fender the fender so if any of you guys have a black fender or you guys have any fender honestly that are locally and that can hook it up let me know but without further ado guys I love y'all so much remember to stay humble I'll see you guys in the next one peace out